six. Great to be back again for another week of learning. It's maths again with me this week. I cannot wait. We're going to have a look at converting units of measure. Have a look at the units of measure and look at the table. Can you copy your own version of this table and place the units of measure in the correct place? Have a go, pause the video while you do it. Here are the answers. So as you know, different units of measurement are used to measure different things. Which units of measurement would you use to measure each of the things in the list below? you chose metres for the height of a door and then millilitres for the volume of water in a glass. Length of a pencil point would be measured in millimetres. Mass of a person means their weight, which is kilograms. And length of a reading book would no doubt be centimetres. Well done. right in the middle, so you know that that's 9.5 centimetres. So how do you go about converting this to millimetres? I expect some of you have got the answers already to this one. Okay, so here is a place value grid. We use these a lot in school. And I've put 9.5 on it because I want to be able to convert to millimetres now. So 9.5 centimetres, there are 10 millimetres in every centimetre. That means that we need to multiply 9.5 by 10 to get the conversion to millimetres. So we know how to do that. 9.5 multiplied by 10 is 95. So that gives us our 95 millimetres. But how do we then convert into metres? I'll give you a moment to pause the video to have a go at working this out yourself. We know ooh, that 100 centimetres make every metre. So that means this time the number will actually get smaller because the unit of measure has got bigger. So we're going to divide and move these digits to decimal places. So we're moving one, two, and we end up with 0 0.095. I bet you got that one right. Some of your questions today, you're going to need to make sure that you convert all of the units of measure into the same unit of measure. So, top tip number one. Always convert each measure so that it is the same unit of measure. This means then you'll be able to directly compare the amount. Have a look at the elephant. What do you estimate would be its weight? So remember, top tip number one, make sure that you convert the units of measure so that they are the same. Will you choose kilograms, tonnes, grams? Which one of these is the easiest one to convert to? Keep watching to see how a place value chart might help you to convert your units of measure. Pause the video while you solve the problem. So here you can see how the place value chart can help you to convert kilograms to tonnes. How much liquid do you estimate is in the glass? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to convert you need to make sure that you've got the same unit of measure. At the moment, there's millilitres and litres there. How many millilitres are there in a litre? You're correct. It's a thousand millilitres for every litre. So what will you need to do? What is the height of this man? Now, I don't think he's 18 millimetres tall, do you? So sometimes an answer is so silly, you can discount it. Have a look at the others though. You've then got to do some converting because you've got centimetres and metres. I'll leave this one to you because I think you know how many centimetres there are in a metre and what to do next. I go at filling in the blanks on this screen. 
There are all sorts of different units of measure. The bottom one's a bit trickier because the units of measure are missing from those empty blanks. Have a go, use your place value chart, make one of your own, either do it on your piece of paper or on a whiteboard, anything at home that can help you. Get moving those digits or work mentally if you can. Top tip number two. If the unit of measure is smaller, the actual number in the answer will be bigger. So when you convert centimetres to millimetres, the answer is bigger because there are 10 millimetres for every centimetre. So the answer is 10 times more. So use that knowledge now and know whether to multiply or divide by 10, 100 or 1000 to fill in the gaps on this grid. If you'd like some help, let the video keep playing and it will show you how to complete the first line. So here's the first line completed. Have a look at the metres and you have 300 metres. There are 100 centimetres in a metre, so you needed to multiply the metres by 100. That's two places to the left on your place value grid. Then you repeat the same with the millimetres. There are 10 millimetres in every centimetre, so as we talked about earlier, that's one move to the left on your place value grid, multiplying by 10. 1,000 metres in every kilometre means that you need to move the digits three spaces to the right to solve this one. Have a go at the other ones below, now that you've got this top one solved. Pause the video to give yourself a little bit of time. So here are the answers. I hope that you managed to have a good try at that, and I'm sure that lots of you did very well. You'll notice that when you convert between the amounts, you actually need to know whether or not you're going to multiply or divide by 10 or 100 or 1000. So make sure that you understand which unit you're converting to and what you need to do to convert accurately. Is there ever a time where you need to multiply or divide by more than a thousand? When is that? Have a think. Have a look at the grid. It contains millilitres, centilitres and litres and shows their abbreviations. Can you fill in the blanks? You might like to use your place value grid as this will help you to convert. Pause the video so that you can complete the challenge. Where would you draw the lines on this one? Can you convert these units of measure and then calculate which value is greater, less than or equal to? Make sure to use the space all around where you're working and annotate as you go. Have a go now at completing the number sentences below. Do use that place value chart if you're finding them a little bit tricky and you get stuck at all. Let's have a look at this problem. A family is going on holiday. When they used their unreliable scales at home, they got an approximate mass for their suitcases. We've done this in the Bradley household. There's Kiva, Morgan, Dad and Mum. At the airport, they placed their suitcases on the baggage weighing scales to find the exact mass. The total mass of all four suitcases was 62.1 kilograms. Give a possible mass for each suitcase. Find three different solutions to the problem. Have a go, think what do you need to do first? If you need a handy hint, listen in now. If not, push pause and have a go. So if you have a look at each of their suitcases, at the moment you've got them measured in grams and in kilograms, you're going to need to convert them so that they are in the same unit of measure. Use your place value chart to help you. Decide which way you need to move the digits and how many places. 
So how many grams are in a kilogram? Well, it's a thousand. That will give you a clue about how many places to move those digits. Here are the answers. Fantastic. I think you did some brilliant converting then. I think you probably found it easier to convert them all into kilograms too to get the answer. Well done. I love these ones. It's true or false. So you've got to decide whether or not these are in the right order. So it says smallest volume and greatest volume. Have a go at figuring it out. Make sure you have a look to see what you want to convert it to. Will you convert it all into litres or all into millilitres? Which one will be easier? Push pause and give yourself enough time to work it out. You might also need to read that scale really, really carefully on the beaker. Just check you're right. Here's the answer. Brilliant effort and great reasoning. Well done, Year 6. Have a look at this problem and have a go at solving it. Now try this one. Have fun converting all of those units of measure. Well done for your hard work, keep it up. Missing you all ever such a lot. See you soon, bye.